show you a really small Azure order that I placed this month. Okay, so first I got a gallon of the Stench X for laundry. This is a stain remover I really like. Uses enzymes. Um, it's just very effective. Okay, and then coming over here, um, I got three more packages of the Pacific Foods vegetable broth. I like this um, for vegetarian nights and um, just in general. I don't make my own veggie broth, so it's helpful. I also got a 16 ounce bottle of the vanilla extract. If you watch one of my previous hauls, you know that I'm not successful making my own vanilla extract yet. Um, so, got some of that. And then I got our favorite grated Parmesan cheese from the Rumiano brand. Again, this is with a microbial enzyme, so don't have to worry about it being kosher. And then I got another 50 pound order of russet potatoes. <laughs> um, they come in 10 five pound bags, and I've just been really impressed with the quality. They're um, just fresh, and they're very firm, and they seem to store for a long time, and they taste very good. So, been happy with that. I think it's my third time getting the 50 pound bag, or second or third, I forget. And then my one of my favorite things from Azure is the 10 pound bags of the organic, unbleached, all-purpose flour. I needed to restock on that for challah and different baked goods, so I got four packages of that. And of course, our favorite item, which we haven't had in a while, this is the um, large bag of dried peaches. I'm telling you guys, if you, want, if you want to avoid candy, but you still have a sweet tooth, this is a great option. So definitely my husband's favorite and all of ours as well. So we just love those. So with that gallon of Stench X, um, I think it was only around $15 um, versus, you see the spray bottle here I got before is around $7, I think. Um, so it was a great price. So I'm just gonna use that to refill my spray bottle. And I keep that just in a basket with my laundry detergent right next to my washing machine. And I'll be set for a while with that. So very happy with that product. And I'll probably continue to buy that into the future. And then I also like to store my all-purpose flour in glass jars, um, at least the package that I have open at the time. I'll leave like the other unopened packages um, in the garage in our food storage uh, shelving area. Um, but I just prefer things in glass um, and I like the wide mouth. These are the gallon glass jars that you can also buy from Azure. I have quite a few of the quite a few of those now and really happy with those. But it holds a good amount of flour. Um, it's not the full 10 pound bag. I'd say it's probably um, closer to five pounds, maybe a little bit more. You can see there, I roll it down and it's about um, half the bag's gone now. So um, I'll keep this glass um, container of all-purpose flour inside my house and I'll use this um, for all the different baking purposes and probably last me for a week or two. And then I'll just refill it and go get more as needed. Okay, so today I wanted to show, using the potatoes that I got from Azure, I was craving some hash browns. I'm currently um, seven and a half months pregnant and there's certain comfort foods that <laughs> just do better than others. So to make these hash browns, you're gonna need a bowl, um, something to peel your potatoes, a box grater, strainer, kitchen towel, and a good old skillet. I love my cast iron skillet to fry it up. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is wash your potatoes. Now, you don't have to because you're going to be peeling them, but this is kind of a tip 
um, that I've learned over the years that it's actually a lot easier to peel a potato if you if it you get the skin wet first. So that's what I like to do. So I'll go ahead and, and peel those real quick. Okay, now after I have the peeled potatoes, I'm gonna take my um, box grater, put it inside of my bowl, and with using like the larger holes, I will grate all the potatoes in directly into the bowl. Make sure I get every little bit, it all counts. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this directly into the sink and fill it with cold water, as cold as I can get. And I'm going to agitate the water uh, and the potatoes with my hand for a few minutes. Um, well, not so much a few minutes, maybe a minute. And this is helping to release the starches. Um, I will then pour it into my colander inside of my sink and continue to rinse the grated potatoes with cold water and kind of um, rub the potato shreds through my fingers again just removing as much starch as possible this is going to create a crispier hash brown um, so I've skipped this step before and I end up with more of a pile of mush still tastes good it's potatoes but you know we're looking for a crispy hash brown so okay after rinsing I will push out as much liquid as possible with um, like my hand and my fist here uh, inside the sink through the colander and then I there's still gonna be quite a bit so I'll take a clean kitchen uh, towel right here these are flour sack towels I have a ton of them they help me reduce the need for paper towels you could use paper towels here but um, you end up using a ton and I would just prefer to use a flour sack towel that I can wash okay so I'll pull up all the corners and squeeze it out into the sink and you can see there's quite a bit of liquid still in there and I'm not even gonna be able to get all of it. But as long as you can get as much as you can, um, it'll end up evaporating inside the pan, the remaining water, and you'll still end up with a nice crispy potato. Okay. So after I've done that, I kind of just take the dry corners and uh, continue to pat it down. Again, just using, utilizing that entire towel to soak up as much liquid as I can. Okay, so now in my um, hot skillet, it's been preheating on medium heat. I'm gonna add a good layer of oil to the bottom. You could use, um, you know, a few different oils. I use olive oil because I'm not cooking past medium heat, but you could use uh, coconut oil, avocado oil, sesame oil. Okay, so you just wanna pile on all your hash brown shreds, potato shreds, I should say. And once you get them all out of the towel, you're gonna go ahead and spread them out into an even layer along the bottom of the pan and kind of uh, pat them down firmly best you can so they're gonna kind of as they cook maintain somewhat of like a, a solid shape to them and you'll see in a little bit so I add a little bit of oil on top this is optional but um, you kind of it helps have that extra oil moisture okay so I add the lid and while that's cooking for about five minutes I'm gonna go ahead and cook up some uh, fried duck eggs. These are a blessing from one of our friends um, that have a homestead a uh, few hours from where we live. So when we meet up, they're so gracious to give us some duck eggs and they're so good. They taste like chicken eggs, um, but they definitely have more of a kind of like a velvety texture to them. Um, so yeah, very good. So I'll add some grass-fed butter to my little skillet and crack the eggs in here and I'm perfectly satisfied with just some salt and pepper added to the top 
and I'll cook these on a either a low or a medium low heat until um, all the white is showing in the egg whites and then I'll give them a flip and try to take them out immediately so that I still get kind of like a jammy slash runny egg um, you'll see later that I didn't <laughs> I, I overcooked them a bit but that's okay okay so after about five minutes of cooking the hash browns you're gonna remove the lid and you're gonna add some salt and some pepper you could add different seasonings as well if you'd like I I'm you know sometimes like to do garlic powder maybe some uh, thyme but also just the classic salt and pepper is probably the best okay so you'll see here I'm taking my spatula and I'm kind of lifting up the sides and trying to s I'm looking for uh, like browning and kind of like a solid mass coming up but you can tell it's still kind of how it was five minutes ago when I first put it in the pan it's kind of all separate so I add a little bit of oil and I'm gonna put my cap back on and let it cook for another three to five minutes and come check on it again okay after three to five minutes I'm gonna remove my lid again and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm gonna go around the edges and I'm gonna look for it coming up kind of together in a disc see how it's coming together like that there you go and looking for that beautiful golden brown so now I know it's time to flip now you'll see in just a second um, after I start sectioning it off. Okay, so this is another thing too. Since this is like a, I think it's a 10 inch skillet, maybe 12 inch. Um, if you try to flip this whole thing yourself, you're probably gonna make a mess. So I divide it into four sections and I flip the four sections. So you'll see when I flip the first section, there's a little bit of burnt, burning, burnt section. <laughs> Um, on the hash browns so I would say I left this for an additional five minutes but I maybe should have checked after three minutes so just keep that in mind um, it doesn't hurt to you know check sooner than later so you don't have burnt but I will say that once we ate them you couldn't really taste the uh, burnt it still just tasted like a nice toasty hash brown and it was very crispy so um, it wasn't a loss at all, but if that does happen, you can just kind of chip away the burnt pieces as well. And you can see you still have a lot of good browning going on there. Okay, so I add a little bit more oil once I had flipped over all the sections. And this is just going to ensure that the bottom of the hash browns now cooks properly. Um, since the original bottom <laughs> had soaked up a lot of the oil. So I'm going to add the lid again. And again, two to five minutes later, I come back and I'm checking for the doneness at the bottom side. So you can see with this side, I didn't wait quite as long. So I have a a better golden brown going on with no burnt sections and then I always go ahead and taste some of the hash brown um, partially because I can't wait and partially because I want to make sure that um, kind of the middle sections that aren't really crispy like the still looks like just like the white potato shreds I want to make sure that that's actually cooked through it kind of tastes like a mashed potato versus like a raw potato um, so that's kind of your indicator that it's done because you're gonna obviously you have both sides that are crispy So after that taste test I determined that it was cooked through and it tasted really good and I had a really good crisp layer so that's it and I just went ahead and uh, Plated that with my duck eggs and I also added a little bit of sauerkraut the sauerkraut's a really good addition to this type of meal because sometimes you know eggs and potatoes by itself can be kind of heavy um, but the sauerkraut adds a nice acidity and lightens it up a bit and it will also help uh, digest that type of meal you can tell my 
egg was definitely <laughs> cooked more than I'd like to, but it still tasted really good, especially the whole combo of the crispy hash brown, the egg, and the sauerkraut. So yeah, I hope you guys try this. If you've never made hash browns at home, I was intimidated for a long time and I finally just did it. And it definitely is one of those things that takes a little bit of trial and error. But I would say as long as you remove as much starch as you can and then squeeze out as much moisture um, and add enough oil to a hot pan, you probably will be successful. And if you're not the first time, I would say try again. So yeah, um, thanks for watching guys. And again, if you're interested in ordering from Azure Standard, uh, go ahead and, and click the link below uh, to get started with your first order. And uh, let me know in the comments if you guys make these hash browns and tell me how they turned out. Okay, enjoy and shalom. Thank you.